All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well, today you join me as I go to pick up a Peugeot 308, which I bought for just £300. Exciting. Right off the bat, I might as well tell you that I detest the Peugeot 308 and the 307, which came before it. The old 306 of the 90s was quite good, though. But then that was a quarter of a century ago. When I first moved to the UK 10 years ago, I bought a 2002 307 diesel. It was in that electric blue colour, which, to be honest, was the only thing it had going for it. I hated it. Hated that car. I hated the stereo controls, which didn't work. I hated how it would flash its ABS and traction light every time it rained, which was quite a lot. I hated how every time you opened the door to get out of the wretched thing, you'd kick off the door seal on the sill. It was a really poor design, that. But on the other side of the coin, it was quite talky. It was very spacious, very practical, and it was good on fuel. I kept it for about two months before I thought, you know what, life's too short. Just get rid of it. I replaced it with a Mark IV Golf 1.6 petrol, black, with a beige leather interior. And that wasn't much better, to be honest. But since then, I've had lots of 307s and lots of 308s through my business, and they always sell really well. It's annoying, really, because I hate them, but I still have overheads to pay. And if that's what sells, then stock up on them. This one in particular came in part exchange at just £300. So I'm thinking if I can spend another £300 on it, it'll stand me at £600, and it should be worth about £1,500 all day long. That should leave me with a tidy profit of around 900 quid. Because our economy is tanked recently thanks to our shambolic government, it seems to be that only the cheaper end cars are selling. Nobody's spending money when they don't have to, only when they need to. So as much as I hate the thought, I've got to start selling some cheaper cars. And this £300 308 might be my next profit opportunity. I haven't seen the car yet, but we're off to a promising start. I've just been to work and picked up the paperwork, and there are two keys, two keys, plural, and a load of bills and receipts, including a new cam belt. Nobody does that. Everybody always seems to just run the 308s and 307s into the ground. So I've got my fingers crossed that this is quite an easy turnaround. We'll soon find out, won't we? Right, I'll catch up with you shortly. Are you going to wait there, Gocker? Cheers, Gocker. Well, we're here, and it looks all right. It's blue. It's only an S spec because it's got wheel trims, not alloys. It's easier to, oh, we've got a wing mirror that's damaged. Oh, hang on, hang on a minute. Stop the press. Gets slightly worse, this. We've got a Space Saver tire on the back, or a Space Saver wheel. It's missing its wing mirror, and the front wing is very scratched. It looks like an abused CD. It's crying out for a new set of reg plates, although they are the original plates. Horden's Motorhouse. In fact, no, they're not. The reg number begins with KM, which means it's come from Milton Keynes originally. Now, that usually indicates that it's a rental car, or its first owner was a rental car company. The headlamps could do with a buff. It actually doesn't look too bad. You might think I've lost the plot here. For a 14-year-old Peugeot 308, that isn't bad. I've seen worse. Before we look around, let me do a vehicle history check. Now, I always use a company called Car Vertical. It's really easy to use. All you do is go to carvertical.com and then type in your reg number. In this case, it's Kilo November 58 Tango Hotel Foxtrot. I've done a deal with Car Vertical, so you'll get 10% off each and every vehicle check that you do. All you need to do is click the link below in the video description and use the promo code HIGHPEAK. It's really important that you do this before you buy a car because it checks to see if it's ever been stolen, ever been involved in any accidents, checks to see if there's outstanding finance on it, all that sort of stuff. How good does my green E46 convertible look parked up over there? It isn't expensive and it gives you real peace of mind. Plus, Car Vertical checks databases in dozens of countries, so they're really thorough. It's just loading now as we speak. Right, well, that is a Peugeot 308, as we know. There's no mileage fraud detected. It has never been stolen, never been involved in any accidents, no outstanding finance, so that's all clear. It was manufactured in January 2008, but not registered in the UK until October 2008. Let's see if there's any MOT on it. Okay, it had an MOT test then in April this year, and it passed, but there were, oh, quite, whoa, quite a lot of advisory items, more than I've ever seen. So then, near side rear service brake binding, but not excessive. Offside front lower suspension arm pin or bush worn. Oil leak, but not excessive. Near side rear service brake binding, but not excessively. Front brake disc worn, but not excessive. Front reg plate deteriorated, but not likely to be misread. That's a fair assessment. Near side rear tire worn close to the legal limit. Offside rear service brake binding, but not excessive. Near side non obligatory mirror damaged. You don't say. Near side rear coil spring corroded. Near side front suspension arm ball joint has slight play. Offside rear service brake binding. 
Near side front lower suspension arm pin or bush worn but not resulting in excessive movement. And offside front tyre worn close to legal limit. Alright, very busy MOT tester there. The mileage is... Shows all the old MOTs here. So the mileage right now... Well the mileage at the last MOT was 107,000 miles. This is not particularly high is it? Car Vertical has estimated that the mileage should be about 111,000 right now. But it's all clear. Oh, it's given us a value as well. So it suggests that the trade price of this car is £1,300 or 1949 if it's retail. Could be quids in here. That is a 1.6 diesel manual and that is about it. Right, let's go and have a look then, see how bad it is. Okay then. Might as well start with its good side. It is quite tidy from this side. A little bit of a scuff there on the back bumper, but... Nothing too bad. Mm, that tyre is quite close to the limit, like the MOT said. The sill's not damaged though, just wants a good clean. Up front we've got an evergreen, which is again close to the limit. Wants four tyres this ideally. Quite tidy though. Set of reg plates will transform it, buff the headlamps, do some touch-ins. That really, that one's repainting. They're plastic, these wings. I wonder whether I could just buy a new one. That tyre, again, would probably fail an MOT. And that one's different. This side is littered with little fine scratches. Obviously quite deep on the front wing, but the fine scratches all the way along here. So I'm guessing, Inspector Clouseau, that this person has lived in a rural area and driven down narrow country lanes. Matching rear plates there. Let's see if the other steel wheel is in the boot. One of the keys works and one doesn't. Horden's Chapel and Frith. Quite a rural area. Oh dear. Oh, that stinks. Well, there's the hubcap. It's missing its parcel shelf and it looks like They've used this as a pigsty. Oh, this is very grim. Right, well there is the other wheel then, with a matching tyre. And it looks very bald. Okay, so this one's four tyres. And a very good clean. Look at the dirt around everywhere. It's filthy, isn't it? I wonder if the boot's just an isolated area. I wonder if the rest of the car's immaculately clean. Should we have a look? Oh no. What was I expecting? This is disgusting. Can you imagine getting in this every, every day for work? Look at the state of it. Oh, that gets worse. That seat there looks actually very clean. And the back seats look like they've never been sat in. What's that? Ah, an ashtray, right. It's missing its ashtray there. There we go. I am basically a mechanic. Well, it stinks, it smells of straw. Let's check the mileage. Radio 1. So they were youngish. It's not an old person's car, this. 115,000 miles. Okay. Where's my glow plug light? Why is there no glow plug? Engine light, please go out. Oh, gone out. And the fan works on all speeds. It's very unusual for something French. Well, my clutch feels okay. Not rattling. Okay, that's all fine. We've got instruction manual there for a Sony compact disc player. Quite why that's there, I don't know. Nothing there in this tray. I was hoping for a full service history folder. 
that's quite clean on those mats. You might think I'm mad now, but I've got hope for this car. I think with a very good clean, and it would have to be very, very good. New wing mirror, possibly a new wing. There might be some profit in this. Let's have a look under the bonnet. Noisy track strap there. As always with French cars. Let's have a look in the back. Yeah, it's grim, don't get me wrong, but nothing that can't come back. Another broken ashtray there. This person really didn't like ashtrays, did they? Can't wait to see this once it's clean. Ah. We've got, although it looks broken, doesn't it? We've got a wing mirror cover there in primer. I wonder if that could be. One of the lugs there is broken, but still got two. A little bit of no more nails, and that might just do. Mm. I'm sure with a little bit of. Mm. Yeah, deal with that later. Doesn't look like there's anything broken there, you know. Little trusty 1.6 HDI. Well, it all looks quite straight under here, actually. You can see the road below. Let me check the oil. black but then it's a diesel so you'd expect that coolant looks fairly fresh this might just be okay right then let's drive this disgusting car Got to make it through that barrier before the barrier closes. Will I make it? Will I make it? Yes, of course. Seatbelt on, safety first. Right. Well, I think this 1.6 HDI is 115 horsepower. Could be wrong, but I've got that figure in my head. So it should pull quite well. First gear's good. Pulls all right, the turbo's engaging. Second gear, no crunch. Third gear's all right. Drives in a straight line. It's not knocking. Doesn't have a blowing exhaust. I've got no warning lights on the dash whatsoever, which is a massive surprise. This drives all right, you know. It is disgusting, it's filthy and it stinks. It smells of animals. And I'm really wary about what I touch because everything looks sticky and disgusting. I don't even want to think about what that is in the cup holder. So far though, so good. Do the windows work? One does. Well, I'll be. We've got a full house. Fourth gear's fine. Fifth, no crunch. I'm quite impressed, you know. I think what I'm gonna do with this is, oh, there. Need to allow a bit more braking distance because I'm aware that I've got four tyres which are quite close to the legal limit. Yeah, I think what I'll do with this is take it to the local car wash and then run away quickly before they see me. They won't thank me for this at all. And then in a day or two, pick it up and then crack on with it. I think I'll order a fresh set of number plates from Harrods. I'll order four cheap budget tyres. I'll get the wing mirror cover painted and I'll look on eBay for a new replacement front wing. And I thought there should be plenty of those on eBay. If I can try and find one in the right colour, it'll save me some money on paint. So if I could keep my spend to around £400, it's already increased from the three, does need a little bit more work than I anticipated. If I could keep my spend to £400, give it a little service, run it through MOT, 
should owe me £700. This is one of those double your money cars. If I can't get £14.95 for this car, then there is something wrong. Have they got a CD? What have they been listening to? Dodie, build a problem. Never heard of it. Let's play it, shall we? I'm intrigued. We've even got a quarter of a tank of diesel. Unless it's got a faulty gauge. I run barefoot shoes. Could it be different? Sounds depressing. Let's give the old air conditioning a test, shall we? Stand back because it's going to blow a load of dust and straw at me. Uh, no. I'd say not. But on the bright side, we're coming into winter, aren't we? Who wants air conditioning in December? Nobody. Although that is, that's getting cooler, you know. If the air conditioning works in this car, I will eat my hat. It does, you know, that's getting cooler. This is one of those cars that looks far worse than it actually is. Had the previous owner of this taken it to the local car wash and spent 50 pounds on a clean, stuck on the wing mirror cover, they could have got double the money for this. If this would have rolled up at work looking clean with an intact wing mirror, we'd have given six or seven hundred pounds for it. People just don't know that, I suppose, do they? So they try and trade in something that looks as bad as this. Had I not driven this or seen that it had a little bit of history in a fresh cam belt, I might have just crushed it. Which would have been a bit of a waste because there's two or three years more life left in this. Right, well I think that I don't really need to drive it any further. I've seen enough. Let me go and drop it off at the car wash and then run off. Right, I'm at the car wash now. I need to make a fast, discreet getaway before anybody sees me. I'm quite embarrassed to drop this car off. Right, I'm gonna go for it. All right, guys. Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. In fact, no, I'm getting ahead of myself there. Let me tell you exactly what I did step by step. I'd hate to ruin the ending. The first thing I did was take it to the car wash and then ran away quickly because it was a complete mess. Two days later, I sheepishly went to collect it and they've done a really good job. I don't know how they managed to turn a car around as bad as this for 50 pounds, but either way, it's the best 50 quid I've ever spent. I ordered a new set of reg plates from Harrods. They cost me 12 pounds. And like I've said to you in many videos before, a new set of reg plates instantly lifts the car. It's a really quick and easy job to do. I even did it myself. Then I removed the old duct tape off the near side wing mirror and fitted the cover on. One of the lugs was broken, so it needed a little bit of Sikaflex. I know it's still in its primer, but it's on and it looks much better. I ordered a set of tailored mats off eBay for 12 pounds. They haven't arrived yet, but they can go straight in. With it then looking a bit tidier and more presentable, I took it down to my garage. So I asked them to do a minor service on it, which they did, and then also an MOT. I ordered four new tyres for it, £40 each plus VAT. But that's where it all went downhill and I decided before they go any further to cut my losses and get out of it quick. You see, before they do a full MOT test, they do a pre-MOT just to see if it'll pass. And if it won't, what work it'll require. And the list of jobs this thing needs is quite long and quite expensive. So let me find somewhere nice to park and I'll go through this long list with you. Okay, so as we all know, it needed four tyres. They would have cost me £40 each plus the VAT. So that is four, six, is 16, 160 plus the VAT, 32, £192. The next thing on the list, although the mirror cover was back on, it's still missing the piece from underneath. So that would have ultimately needed a new wing mirror. I had a look on eBay and they were about £40. They also noticed a stone chip in the windscreen, which I've just spotted right there. That would have been an MOT advise. The offside reg plate bulb was in op. This next one was something that I hadn't actually noticed myself, but the injector seal was leaking on cylinder three, and you can actually hear it chuffing away. Granted, the part isn't that expensive, but it would have added more labour to it. Also, they noticed that the turbo heat shield was loose, which would have meant taking the DPF off. Again, more labour. The front brake discs and pads want replacing, the near side front roll bar and offside front roll bar need replacing, and also the near side front bottom arms and the offside front bottom arms, which kind of explains that clunk when you over bumps. There's a clamp missing off the pipe to the DPF, which causes a bit of a vibration. They also noticed that the offside rear coil spring had been replaced at some point, but with the wrong part. So it's got the wrong spring on it, so that'll have to be replaced. Also, the front wipers are hitting. 
I don't know what that means. They seem all right. In the end, all I decided to do was the minor service because they'd done that already and I was kind of committed and also one tire to replace the faulty one that was in the boot. It had got a puncture and it couldn't be repaired. So it's had one new tire. All I spent at my mechanics then was 104 pounds. So if you had the 104 pounds spent there, plus the 12 pounds for the mats, plus the 12 pounds for the plates, plus the 50 pounds at the valitors, that's 178 pounds. Plus the 300 pounds I paid for the car, that gives us a total of 478. Now what I've done is sold this car already for 500 pounds. Ultimately then, there's no huge amount of profit in this car at 500 pounds. It gives me a profit of 22 pounds. It was hardly worth doing, but I didn't really know that at the time. I thought because it drove okay, there might have been a little bit of life left in it, but I was kind of wrong. For me to pay somebody to do all that work, I'd be talking five or six hundred pounds, plus the paint on the front wing, plus the paint on the wing mirror. You'd be talking six fifty, seven hundred pounds, and it just wouldn't really be worth the hassle. So in the words of the late Kenny Rogers, I think you've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. I'm slowly learning, aren't I? All it's taken is a decade. Imagine where I'll be in another ten years. Right, well, thank you once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers, guys. I'll see you next time.